Hello and welcome to Piano Talks with Warren Lee, a show dedicated to the art and craft and the nuts and bolts of piano playing across all levels. Some say that the best music is one that speaks for itself. The same is true for piano playing. The piano should talk not only for itself but also for the composer. But before we get there, let me do the talking first. In this podcast, I'll be talking about sight reading, a very critical skill to have, yet is also a word that is dreaded by most students who too readily proclaim themselves as poor sight readers, but without trying too hard. No one is born a poor sight reader, nor an excellent one, for that matter. Like all other skills, it is acquired. I value the skills in my students so greatly that I have developed a series of over 500 sight reading exercises over the years, and I would like to share some of my thoughts on this topic here. Sight reading is often misconceived as an optional or supplementary skill, which exists only in the context of an examination. In my opinion, omitting the word sight. Before reading reflects the true value of the skill far better. After all, nobody speaks of sight reading in the study of language, but is simply concerned with the all essential reading skill. The ability to read is unquestionably a core skill in music, a prerequisite for the further study and enjoyment of it. The age-old saying "practice makes perfect" says it all. There's neither a substitute for nor a secret formula that develops your sight reading skill other than repeated practice. In addition to the continuous practice, having a more systematic approach to reading music at sight is of paramount importance, and will both accelerate and consolidate the acquisition of this essential skill. Before you tackle any sight reading, or I should say reading exercises at the piano. It is a good idea to firstly diagnose where your area of strength or weakness lies, especially between the two basic elements of musical reading: rhythmic reading and pitch reading. Rhythmic reading refers to the ability to execute a given rhythm upon a steady pulse correctly, whereas pitch reading refers to the ability to find and play the notated pitches on the piano correctly. The diagnosis can be simply done by clapping the rhythm of the given melody, disregarding the pitches and other information on the page for the moment. After securing the correct rhythm, sing the melodic line in the correct rhythm. This two-step approach allows your brain to process rhythm and pitch separately, and by doing so away from the piano, also eliminates the other elements in play, such as your hand coordination and fingering. If you find that clapping the rhythm is more of a challenge, then practice reading rhythmic patterns, preferably with a metronome serving as the steady pulse at first. Since music happens over time, having a solid sense of pulse is imperative, and it's the very fundamental of musical reading skills. On the contrary, if you experience more trouble finding the correct pitches, then practice reading notes individually. Or out of context at first, such as with the help of flashcards. Another important skill a pianist must develop, both for and through sight reading, is a blind knowledge of the keyboard. This means that the pianist must be able to feel and find the right notes on the piano without depending on constantly looking at the hands, so that the eyes are kept firmly on the score. This familiarization can be developed consciously by deliberate practice. The natural starting place would be to practice scales and arpeggios blindly, as these are often the building blocks of real pieces of music. Next, a teacher or parent may hold up a cardboard so as to cut off the sight line of the hands as the student sight reads and plays. This, in fact, can be rather fun, and you will most probably be amazed at how quickly your muscles store memory of physical positions and how effortlessly this eliminates most of the stumbling in sight singing. 
Different pianists have different routines when it comes to sight reading, but they all invariably consider the following matters, organized in my eight-step approach here. The first, identify the key. The key signature must be among the first items on any penis radar when it comes to sight reading, and is definitely the first on mine. Not only does it inform you which sharps or flats you need to play, the key signature also tells you which key the piece is in. Not knowing which key you are playing in is comparable to reading a map or flying a plane without knowing where north and south are. You must remember that each key signature suggests two possible keys, a major and a minor key. After identifying the key, I recommend warming up with scales and arpeggios of that particular key, blindly if possible, that is, without looking at the keyboard. It may also be beneficial for students in this preliminary stage to use a pencil to circle all the notes that need to be raised or lowered as a result of the key signature or accidentals. The second step is to set a pause. Simply knowing the time signature, sometimes it's not enough. You must also decide how best to count when tackling the given piece. Scan through the piece and see if it is necessary to subdivide. For example, a slow 4-4 with many semiquavers would be better counted in subdivision as 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. Next, you have to check the tempo marking given at the top of the music. Far too often, students play in a default moderate tempo. To find the right tempo for you, look for the passage where it is most technically difficult to play at a fast speed and then estimate how fast you can play it and set that optimal tempo for the entire piece. What you do not want is to start a piece in a brilliantly brisk tempo, only to slow down in the difficult passage. Counting an empty bar in time before starting a piece also helps establish the pause. The use of a metronome to keep time is much welcomed, especially in the early stages of learning though the internalization of the pause remains the ultimate goal. The next step is to look for patterns in the music. There are often repetitions and sequences in music, and you would save a lot of time when you identify the patterns first. Number four on my list is follow the fingerings. Fingering is often underrated, undervalued, and overlooked by pianists. Fingerings are given in pivotal and strategic places in most music nowadays, and I can assure you that the subject of fingering is given utmost importance during the editorial process. These fingerings, however, are given only as a guide, which you may disagree or find better solutions depending on the size of your hands. You may also work out and write down more fingerings as an exercise, but the most important point is that you think about fingering. I can devote a lot more time and I probably will later in the series. The next step is called value the extras. Besides the musical notes which tell pitch and duration, there is a lot of other coded information the composer leaves in each piece of music. They are the performance directions, including dynamic, expression, tempo, and articulation markings. Missing a dynamic marking or accent or a staccato is just as undesirable as playing a wrong note. If you develop a habit of paying attention to and valuing these extras in these sight-reading exercises, then your heightened attention to these details will make you a better musician all around. Number six on my list is look ahead. When you begin attempting to read at sight, your eyes should be looking slightly ahead to the next beat or bar in anticipation. It is similar to driving, where the driver, while keeping his sight mostly on the short distance in front of his vehicle, must also look farther ahead to anticipate and be mentally prepared for any pedestrian crossing, red light or other cars turning down the road. The perfect place to start practicing this skill of looking ahead in music is a passage where there is a long-held note or rest. 
take advantage of the time provided and look immediately at the next bar and formulate your next hand or finger position while still holding and counting the long look and rest. The ability to look ahead will grow and develop with experience. Number seven on my list is called hit and run. While the anticipation aspect of sight reading is likened to driving, this next step is most certainly not. As a sight reader of music, you are advised to always hit and run. In other words, do not stop and go back and fix your mistakes. Keep going no matter what went wrong. Stuttering is worse than missing a note because you would then end up missing a note as well as time. A teacher or parent may help develop this integrated skill of looking ahead and hitting and running by officially covering the bar of music that has just gone by in time. Last but not least, if you are given limited time to prepare before having to read a piece at sight, such as in the examination room, it is best to look for the most challenging passage and work on it first. Always tackle the biggest hurdle first. And there you have it, my eight-step approach to sight reading. My last piece and the biggest piece of advice for you is to make it a habit to practice sight reading. And it doesn't have to be a sight reading exercise. Pick any hymns or any music that you can find and just read it. A quick study a day keeps the stumbling away. If you feel enlightened or inspired in any way about sight reading and are ready to go out there to practice some, allow me to be self-indulgent here and recommend my series called Sight Reading Plus, published by Brio Music Press and is available in major music retailers in Hong Kong as well as on my website at www.warren-lee.com. These reading materials are graded by difficulty and written with the eight-step approach in mind, and each piece is categorized by different challenges to help students find pieces most suitable for their intended learning outcomes. It also comes with a glossary to explain every musical term that appears in the exercises. Most importantly, I wrote these pieces not as exercises, but as pieces of music worthy of playing and even performing. So, enough of my talking. Let me present you with two pieces of mine from the Grade 8 Sight Reading Plus series called Silver Lining and Hot. Thank you for listening to Piano Talks. I'm your host, Warren Lee.